In this week's On It with Steven's Life, we will let you know what new course will be offered for your protection. Plus, hear what you should have in your closet this spring. We've got this and much more, so stay tuned. Stevens will be offering a new course, and trust me, it will benefit us all. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Jessica Langford. And I'm Brianna Jackson. Just in case you need some extra protection, don't worry. We have what you need. SGA held another student forum with President Diane Lynch, where we found out some very exciting news. As you all may know, Stevens Security works hard to ensure our safety here on campus 24-7. We have just received word of a new training they went through to take that one step further. Director Tony Coleman and security officer Tasha Williams traveled to Pennsylvania in December where they completed intensive training and obtained their nationally recognized RADS instructor certification. RAD stands for Rape Aggression Defense. They will be conducting RAD classes at Stevens beginning with the upcoming second session in March. Two sections of the course will be offered, a day section Tuesday, Thursday, 8 to 9.15 a.m. and an evening section Wednesday, 6.30 to 9 p.m. The course will be one, uh, one credit course. If someone can take this course for no credit, say for example, they already are carrying their max credit hours. It will be limited to 20 per class. Tony said, we have been trying to make this course happen for a long time, and thanks to the support from SGA, Student Services, and the President, it is finally happening. This course is important for the women of Stevens community because it is a comprehensive women's only course that begins with awareness, prevention, risk redu reduction, and risk avoidance while progressing on to the basics of hands-on defense training. It is a course that will provide young women with viable considerations when making decisions about about the personal safety when faced with a realistic situation. Tony and Tasha will be the instructors of this course. Informational seminars will be held next week. Be sure to watch for the information. We also heard at the forum that the tech department is currently working on getting phone charging stations around campus. Locations and logistics are still being worked out, but when we know more, you'll be the first we share our news with. And it's finally that time again for the annual Dance Company Spring Concert. Come out to the Mecklenburg Playhouse to see features from faculty members and guest artists. Some works will include a choreographed piece titled Pondering by faculty member Deborah Carr, the classic ballet The Free Bird featuring senior Kramer Pruitt, and Michael Burke from Mexico High School is the male lead, a jazzy piece titled Coded, created by artistic director for dance, Kara Esty. The concert begins at 7.30 p.m. from February 28th through March 1st and March 7th and 8th. Looking at news across America, a vote to overturn a new California law that offers transgender students certain rights in public schools will not appear on the November ballot. The reason? The backers of this law failed to gather enough voter signatures to qualify the measure. They need over 504 thousand seven hundred and six hundred signatures but they were about seventeen thousand short the law guaranteed students kindergarten through 12th grade the right to use the school restrooms and to be involved in the sex segregated activities that correspond with their expressed genders instead of their school records mason davis the executive director of the translender law center in oakland said this law gives the schools the guidelines and flexibility to create an environment where all kids have the opportunity to learn. We need to focus on creating an environment where every student is able to learn well and graduate. This law is what's best for all students. And news around the world, this past Saturday, the Mexican government captured suspected drug kingpin with Juan El Chapo Guzman. So what's next? Now Mexico has to decide if they want to extradite or charge Guzman at home. Most believe that, the, that Mexico will want to avoid the struggle of guarding him and any risk that he might be able to escape like he once did before in 2001. I could see it as a point of pride for Mexico to keep holding him until, they, until he exhausts his sentence, said Jan Rosen, as a San Diego defense attorney who has handled past extradition cases. We'll be sure to keep you updated on those details as the story unfolds. 
and in the limelight this week where we highlight the most talked about celebrity news. Honest Liana Anderson gives us the details on two celebs getting pretty close. Looks like one of the Kardashians is spicing things up. Liana? The newly divorced Khloe Kardashian is cuddled up very close to rapper The Game at True Nightclub in LA. They were captured arms around each other and partying it up close with friends. Then Khloe just busts out and starts twerking on Game. The Game's assistant was also there after they might have kicked it off filming Love and Hip Hop LA. Can we suspect something with Kardashian in The Game or his assistant? Nobody could turn down a Kardashian. And love is definitely in the air after basketball star Dwayne Wade proposed to his fiance Gabrielle Union. But this time around, she's doing things a little differently. After her marriage failure in 2005 with NFL Chris Howard, she says, quote, The biggest difference between this marriage and the last will be a prenup. You go into it thinking that when you have your own stuff, you don't need to worry about anybody else's stuff. So everyone should be, go into the relationship saying, I'm here for you and you're here for me. And the reality is, I've never seen the way balance a checkbook. So I need to protect my things. We just hope this marriage lasts this time around. And on Valentine's Day, Kanye West dropped a new single. Tonight I see some super freaky. And some explicit things that him and his fiance, Kim, um, expressed behind closed doors. And mother to be, um, and mother to be, little Kim dropped her new single "Haters" featuring B. Ford of, off her new mixtape "Hardcore." That keeps getting pushed back. Kim may be expecting a boy, but she still will lay down bars and claim her spot in the hip hop industry. In coming to theater, Steve Harvey has done it again with Think Like a Man 2. And this time, they are headed to Las Vegas. Join Kevin Hart, Megan Good, Michael Ely, and, Mo and the rest of the crew as they have the night out in Sin City. That's all I have for this week's In the Limelight. Thanks, Liana. I feel like old man Winter is sticking around for the long run. Hopefully, on his lane, Wallace will let us know how long he'll be with us with this week's seven day forecast. Lane. Thanks, Jessica. Unfortunately, we are gonna be seeing those colder temperatures again this week. Your high for today is 30, but at least it's gonna be sunny. For Thursday, expect a high of 23 and sunny, and it looks like Friday, we're gonna get some more snow with a high of 28. On Saturday, we'll warm up just a little bit with a high of 29, and we'll finish off the weekend with a high of 22 and snow. Looking into next week on Monday, expect a high of 29 and another chance for snow. But finally on Tuesday, we'll get out of that snowy weather with a high of 21 and partly cloudy. Now with this week's pup date, we're going to send it over to Molly Wallace um, with her guest from Second Chance. Hi guys, I'm Molly from Second Chance with Columbia, and I'm here with Tiana and her foster cat, Bowie. Tiana, would you like to tell us anything special about Bowie, any special tricks or quirks he has? Well, Bowie is a 19 pound cat and is super cuddly. And when he gets excited, his tail twitches. So that's something to look forward to if you ever meet this cuddly fellow. We've been playing with him all morning here at the news studio. Bowie is a great cat. You can check him out and other cats and dogs at ColumbiaSecondChance.org. Thanks back to you, Brianna and Jessica at the news desk. Thanks, Lane. As college students, we consume some pretty unhealthy things just because it's affordable. Good thing on it, Shamel Robinson can encourage us to shy away from those cheap and fast foods. Shamel? As products are becoming more filled with toxins, the need to detox and keep a healthy lifestyle is becoming more relevant in today's era. A buildup of toxins in the body can cause physical and mental health, including chronic fatigue, insomnia, food or chemical sensitives, headaches, and diseases. Many of these toxins come from things you use or consume every day like food, water, beauty, and personal care products, and the environment. If you're wondering why it's so important to cleanse and detox your body, here are my reasons why. One, physical health. Boost immune system, increase energy levels, improve digestion, cleanse your blood, and help it in circulate better. Number two, mental health. Sleep better, increase concentration levels. Number three, lifestyle changes. Improve diet, increase physical activities. A cleanse doesn't have to be super invasive or disruptive. Do a little research and find one that fits your lifestyle and budget. Vibrant health cleanses is a great and easy 
options to jumpstart your detox. This simple and delicious lemonade drink flushes out your system and leaves you feeling clean and amazing inside. Give it a try and let us know how you feel on Steven's Life Facebook page. Or if you've cleansed in the past, share your tips. Thanks, Jamel. And finally, the time we've all been waiting for. Spring is just around the corner, and it's finally time to put away those heavy winter clothes. On oh, it's Tyler Paulson that's helping us get ready with a few tips and let us all know what we all need to have in our closets come March. Tyler. Being coined the new dawn of femininity, floor prints may not be groundbreaking, but they will forever be considered the face of spring. Familiar, yes, but extraordinary. Around this time of year, you can always count on a floral fantasy to assure a smooth transition between the seasons, and this spring is no different. Be on the lookout for a new take on a floral prints. The blooming affair began in the, on the spring 2014 runway, taking the form of light as air dresses, exquisite gowns, tailor suits and flowy skirts, silky jumpsuits, uh, and also silky, silky jumpsuits. If you're not keen on approaching a head-to-toe floral look, this season offers plenty of equally stunning alternatives. When wearing florals, opt for lightweight fabrics, ladylike silhouettes, and relaxing cuts. The most delicate of floral prints will be perfectly matched by sheer panels, feminine beauty looks, and layering of soft knits as the temperature drops. Also, be on the lookout for bold prints in spring 2014. The brighter, the better. Think plungy necklines, cinched waistlines, and thigh slits. One aspect that was new on the spring 2014 runway was the clash of floral prints using to define the same garment, often a dress. Thinking about trying this new trend? Just keep in mind that you don't need anything extra to make this a fashion statement. With the right dress featuring mismatched florals, you can simply add a chic, a, a chic pair of heels and nothing else. Now that you're updated on the latest fashion trends, it's time to shop. Try, your, try these new trends and tweet us your favorite floral look. Remember, don't change to fit fashion, change the fashion to fit you. I'm Tyler Poston, back to you. Thanks, Tyler. Everyone wants to have fuller and thicker eyelashes and eyebrows, but is it really that easy to achieve? We've got on it's Yuvia Garcia here to help us out with a quick do it yourself to help you accomplish this look. Yuvia? Products like Matisse do enhance your natural eyelashes. However, they're terribly expensive at about $120 for three milliliters of product. This is a quick and easy natural do it yourself alternative with. Um, materials that you can easily find in your drugstore um, or in your kitchen. So what you're gonna need is you're going to need an empty a mascara tube or just a jar. Um, it's gonna be a little easier today. You're gonna need um, some aloe vera gel. You're gonna need some castor oil and some vitamin E. So what you're gonna do is you're going to take about half of your jar and fill it with your gel. Then you're just going to add half of the vitamin E in there, and then equal ratio of your castor oil. So half on top. Super easy. You're just gonna grab a spoon and mix it in. This should last you about two to three months. You're just gonna keep it in your bathroom. And um, I would recommend using this at night and um, putting it on right before you go to bed. Um, apply it to clean lashes, and then in the morning, wash it all off. You could also use this on your eyebrows. Again, make sure to do this um, at night and every night to get the desired effect. Another thing that might be a little faster if, you're def if you maybe got your eyebrows done and one is uneven or you're just unhappy with them is actually Rogaine. So you can make sure to use a clean, um, eyebrow um, brush just for this because it's definitely not something you want to use anywhere else and you're going to apply it to your um, eyebrows every night right before you go to bed and in about four weeks you should start seeing a visible difference. Um, other great things for, uh, for this for those of you who don't want to or like to wear mascara for the gel um, is that it'll actually make use work as like a clear mascara, so it'll make your eyelashes look darker and longer, but without the actual cue of it. If you're, or you can use it on your eyebrows if you're filling them in. 
Thanks, Uvia. And back this week's in the Sports Corner, we have Adam Sampson. Adam, what's been going on? Uh, we have basketball and tennis on the schedule for today's Sports Corner. Uh, one of the biggest pieces of news for the Stars basketball program this last week was a win was awarded from a previous game that we had played. Uh, earlier on Thursday, the Stevens Athletics Department received word that Harris Stowe State had been playing with an ineligible player during the January 23rd contest. Mm. Um, therefore, the Hornets were required to forfeit the win, as well as four other wins they had, uh, from January 9th to February 13th. Oh. Um, it was quite a tough stretch of opponents for the Stars last week, though. Starting with the 12th ranked Columbia on Thursday, the Lady Cougars put up 100 points on the scoreboard again uh, against the Stars for the second time this season. In the game, Selena Neal led the team in scoring with 19 points and 9 rebounds, so she had a nice outing against the Lady Cougars. Then on Saturday, the Stars were on the road and hung with William Woods, uh, especially in the, for the majority of the first half. Unfortunately, the Stars didn't have enough gas left in the tank and fell to the Owls 92-49. to mm -hmm. uh, And once again, sophomore Selena Neal led the Stars with the team high 14 points. Uh, moving on to tennis, with a combo of one outdoor and three indoor matches this past weekend, the Stevens tennis team officially kicked off the 2014 season. Um, that was in Springfield, Missouri and Salina, Kansas that they traveled to. Uh, over the weekend, the Stars came away with a one and three team record uh, after facing a pair of ranked squads. Um, the, they first uh, took on Evangel and Graceland, and then in the third match of the weekend, the Stars defeated Central Christian College 7-2, to two, uh, starting out with a pair of victories um, in number one and two doubles. And then in singles action, both Dina Kaisi and Courtney Hules swept their competition, uh, while another highlight came at the number five position while uh, Danny Kelly uh, registered for her first career singles victory. Um, that's all we have for past results, but here's a look at what's coming up for this next week. Uh, tomorrow, the basketball team is on the road at Harris Stowe State. So cool. that uh, <laughs> team, they, they will be without that ineligible player. So mm -hmm. it will make for a, an interesting matchup. Yes. Um, and then on Saturday here at Silverthorne Arena is the very last uh, home game of the year. And we'll be celebrating Senior Day uh, for Davey L. McCoy and Jenna Zim Sloney and tip-off is set for 2 p.m. on Saturday. And I've got some good news and some bad news. Good news is tennis was able to take uh, advantage of that nice weather. All right. Bad news is softball has already postponed its Friday and Saturday <laughs> doubleheaders, and oh. this cold front doesn't look like it's gonna be helping out our spring sports much. Um, so I'll keep you guys posted with the, the latest on the start of the softball season. Please right. do, yes, please, please do. We need spring to just come on in and stay. Uh, we yeah. need this consistent weather. I agree. We really do. <laughs> thank you so much, Adam. And that is all the time we have for you this week. So be sure to check back next week for more news. And don't forget to visit our website for 24 hour access to your news at stevens.edu slash stevenslife. You can also find us on Twitter and Facebook where we will always post our latest updates and look for your comments on the show. Thanks for watching and we'll see you here back next week.